How's it going everybody? Chris Esplin back with more Firebase. Today we're going to cover promises. Now I know a lot of you know, already know promises. It's a pretty common concept, but you're going to have a really tough time going forward in this whole how to Firebase series if you don't have a strong understanding of promises and a few of the fun little things you can do with them. In particular, some of the fun things I like to do with them because these are the code patterns I use and they're not that hard to figure out, but if you don't understand them, it's going to be real tricky. Okay. So let's just quickly look at some promises and we'll over, run over the, the API and you'll be good to go. Okay. Most promises begin like this, new promise and then you pass in a function. The function takes two arguments, a resolve and a reject. And you call the resolve when you're done resolving whatever asynchronous operation you're doing. And you call the reject when you're ready to um, reject an asynchronous operation. You can always use callbacks with JavaScript. Callbacks are fine. I've got no problem with callbacks. They work just exact, almost exactly the same as promises. But they're a little limited in some of the, I mean, they don't have as much sugar on top of them. Also, they don't look very good when you code with a lot of callbacks. The code just starts to look kind of ugly, starts to be more difficult to manage, to think about, and to transport around. So that's where promises come in. Promises make your code a lot prettier a lot easier to read through and understand quickly. Okay. A lot of libraries will just return promises, but sometimes you have to make your own promise. Firebase is an example of a library that returns promises. So we don't have to make as many promises manually with Firebase, but oftentimes you'll run into libraries that don't return promises or you'll just need to do something asynchronous on your own and you'll have to make your own promise. So you say new promise and you pass in a, a, a function, this executor function with a resolve argument and a reject argument. Let's look at line 24. I'm gonna have a bunch of values coming in. And so I need to return a promise. So new promise, resolve, reject, and then I'm going to do a set timeout. The set timeout waits 500 milliseconds and then it resolves itself. So it's just simulating an asynchronous operation. So once it resolves itself, once the promise resolves, the promise that will then call the next callback using the dot then function. So because this, this dot then function up top returns a new promise, then we can call dot then and chain off of the promise. So let's start at the very, very top of this file. First, we've got Firebase, which returns promises, and Axios, which is a request, like HTTP library, lets you make HTTP requests and it always returns promises. Okay, so I initialize my Firebase. In fact, let's make this a little bit cleaner. Let's put it right here. We can initialize in one line and then require Axios. Okay, next I make two refs, a swappy ref, the Star Wars API. So we're gonna save our data under swappy slash people and then a keys link because I'm gonna then query the keys using, uh, using the rest API and shallow equals true over here to get the keys in a shallow way. Okay, so first, let's get the keys. Axios.get keys link. So this runs a get call on this keys link. And let's see what it looks like. We can just run it here. All right, I'm in debug mode. There we go. So down here in the debug console, the keys link looks like that. So we're going to call a get on the keys link. Let's, let's let that play through. Oh, there was an error Im immediately unauthorized. I'm not allowed to get it. Oh, I need to add my auth to it. So quickly, let's go over here. Let's go to our settings, project settings, database. Let's add a new secret. We'll show that secret. There we go. Copy the secret over and we'll say, and auth equals that secret. Okay, of course I will get rid of this secret shortly, but until then. We're gonna illustrate one of the fun things about promises. Because if you always return a promise, you can chain and refactor your code really quickly. So in this case, we decided now to fill the data. So my data was empty, I need to fill it. So I'm gonna actually query those using Axios, uh, return, uh, this index.js will now return a promise, which is kind of kind of cool. 
All right, so access.get, I'll get the people, and that returns me a response. I'm going to set, call swappyref.set on the results, and then I'm going to get the, get the data and sort of step through it. So let's watch how this plays out. Okay, start from the top. There we go. All right, our res.data results, res.data.results. Looks like that, it's an array. Typically we wouldn't just save an array, but this is just a quick demo. So let this, let this play through. All right, so we had the result of that. And I didn't add that, but let's see what the arguments are. All right, so now we've got our next result. So we step to the next step, which is access.get the keys link. So we run that. Now we've got our keys, so we can step through there. Now this time we actually have keys. See, we've got 10 keys, zero through nine. So for each key, we're gonna call it up and we're gonna get the value individually for each key. What do we have here? Values. Oh, look, we've got a whole set of values. Each one is its own. So the, uh, the dot once is gonna return a snapshot. So values zero is a snapshot. So I can call val on it and get the value. In this case, uh, yeah, dot name there, Luke Skywalker, okay? So it's gonna return an array of all the res results that were pushed onto this promise array. So these promises, of course, it's an array of promises. We're pushing promises onto the array of promises, then using promise.all to wait for all those promises to resolve. And once they're all done, we go to the next step and we get we get an array of the re results of the promises as a values argument on our next step in the, in the promise chain. And then I'm gonna just play through as we did before and let it go. Okay. So let's quickly go over the rest of the API here. So for promises, let's start at the top. New promise, pass in an executor function with a resolve and reject. Promise is in one of three states, pending, meaning nothing's happened yet, fulfilled, meaning it has been fulfilled, you've called the resolve on it, or rejected, meaning you've called the reject on it. So they can stay in pending state forever. There's actually, there's no limit to that. And that's one of the nice things about promises, you can just sit in a pending state forever. And you can hang on to a promise for months or years, doesn't matter. And then when you fulfill or reject it, you get the callback. All right. Here's the, the pattern we've got. A, you have a pending promise that fulfills or rejects, and if it fulfills, you, you, it goes to the next dot then in the chain, and then calls the, the asynchronous, well, asynchronously goes to that dot then callback, or if it rejects, it goes to the catch. And you can continue to return promises and chain off of these promises as long as you like. All right, so fun methods on promises. We've got promise.all, which I've already demonstrated, lets you pass in an array of promises that will wait to resolve until all the promises have resolved. If one of them rejects, it rejects immediately. Next is promise.race. I've never used this before, but very cool. It a, returns a promise that fulfills or rejects as soon as one of the promises in the iterable fulfills or rejects. So it, it, it fulfills or rejects as soon as one of the Promises passed in does it. it lets them lets those promises race, and the first one to win um, goes to the next step. And then, of course, there's promise dot reject and promise dot resolve. Um, promise dot reject, for example, right here. In this in this part of the the chain, I just wanted to return just a single rejection, so I can just return capital P promise not new, just capital P promise dot reject some value, and that'll reject a pro send a rejection along that, that chain and drop me down here into the catch. Alternatively, I could say, hey, return true, or return 10. So if I return, let's say 10, let's put a breakpoint right here. Let's run this again. And you'll notice I can return just a value and the value acts as a resolved promise. So in this case, some number, is 10. It's identical to promise.resolve 10. I can run it 
either way. I can return just a value or I can return a promise.resolve call. Again, some number is just 10. All right, thanks for watching this video. Hope you learned a lot about promises. This is all I gotta cover. It's really not that much material. Of course, you can always look at the MDN. This is what I recommend, looking at the docs on MDN and learn as much about promises as you can. Firebase really relies on promises in the JavaScript SDK. So I'm gonna use promises extensively and if you, if you can't follow the promises, you're gonna have a really tough time understanding this code. So thanks a lot for listening. Please subscribe if you found this useful and want to follow up with the rest of my videos.